Welcome to Aiken Business Matters, and we're very fortunate today to have a uh, young man who I've known since he was a, a young boy, uh, Eric Brinkley. He is the operator of a family business here in Aiken, Aiken Laundromats. And uh, great to have you with us today, Eric. Glad to be here. And uh, of course, I know your dad real well and, and your uncle <laughs> and the rest of your family. We've known around town for, for a long, long time. You have a very rich family heritage here in town. We do. And. Uh, Eric, tell us a little bit about yourself and your family. Um, my father's side of the family is actually from Ellington. And um, when the plant came, they moved to uh, New Ellington, where my grandfather had a grocery store. Mm -hmm. uh, I was born in New Ellington and raised in New Ellington, but spent most of my time here in Aiken. Uh, and from a grocery store, um, while my before my grandfather retired, my father actually started laundromat businesses. And uh, that's what we've been doing ever since. Yeah. Um, I went to, I graduated from Silver Bluff in 2001 and then lived in New Ellington until my college years. And I went to the University of South Carolina. And as soon as I graduated college, I moved back here to Aiken. So you did come back home. I did. I had <laughs> big plans, but then reality set in. Yeah. So I, um, at my graduation dinner, Dad asked uh, what time I was going to be at work Monday morning. <laughs> <laughs> now, I can see Jimmy saying yeah, that. Yeah. yeah, oh yeah. Now, one thing I wanted to capture before we move on is, is the, uh, you, you indicated that your family was in Ellington yes. and that they moved. And, and maybe some of our viewers don't know about that, but uh, when, when the Department of Energy came to Aiken and they selected the site out there, one of the part of that large site out there was uh, the town of Ellington. Mm -hmm and uh, the Department of Energy has allowed uh, the historic, uh, one of the historic arms of uh, the DOE to, to now uh, have tours of, of Ellington out yeah. there. And I know there's some videos that were put out about yes. it and uh, I happen to have one, I'm, I enjoy it very much. And uh, it, it's just a neat thing and I know that they're developing a historic uh, our museum here in town that uh, that is going to be uh, talking about and showing pictures of, of that whole process of how the the whole Savannah River site was developed and, and how it works and and the benefits that it, it's been to our country and our nation. So I know it was a great imposition and, and certainly a, a, a shock to all the people that were involved in it, but your family seemed like they uh, took it in stride and they just uh, moved and, and started other things. So. Your your granddad started a grocery store there. Yeah, in my, um, his mother actually had a grocery store in Ellington. Right. And so it was kind of in his blood. Um, his brother went to Jackson and started a grocery right. store, and then my grandfather eventually uh, eventually went to New Ellington and started a yeah. grocery store. Now I had some pictures that some, that uh, were part of some uh, photos that uh, I got from some historic areas at the site that somebody was kind enough to share with me, and I was showing them to your dad. And I said, tell me exactly what I'm looking at. And so he was pointing, he was telling me all the different things. He said, I don't know who that gentleman is standing there, but I bet it was so-and-so. Yeah. So he, he, uh, he's, he certainly enjoys talking about family history. And I think it's uh, something he's very proud of. And I'm certainly you are too. Dad was actually the last child born in the city limits of Ellington. How about that? Before they started coming to uh, Aiken Regional or Augusta. And I think that uh, they, they also have a, a group that still comes gets together about once a year. They to, do, the Ellington Reunion. Yeah. So they meet at uh, St. Paul United Methodist Church uh, in July. Right. In June, June, last week in June. So that's, they're keeping the, they're keeping the history alive and going. And, there and is. That's, that's important. Aiken is, is, is a, a community that really uh, pays a lot of attention to the history and, and likes to keep things uh, like that, our heritage in, uh, in front of uh, the younger people as they're growing up like yeah. yourself. So uh, I know you have learned a lot and listened to uh, oh, yeah. all the stories that have gone on. Very few of those people still remain that have the good stories though. I know it. And what a lot of people don't realize is when the, uh, the town was moving, a lot of the men were at war. So it was the women who actually were in charge of moving the, the town, their homes. Right. And, uh, which I always found very interesting yeah. because, you know, in that day and time, uh, it took a lot for the women to do that and manage the family and run some of the businesses that the men ran. Yeah. I think that we all today, and certainly somebody your age, uh, it, 
it's hard to, to uh, even imagine how that happened. But I guess all across the United States, uh, so many men were uh, at war yeah. that uh, the women did a lot of things that men were doing. And oh, yeah. uh, they had to pull together to do it. I know in all the defense plants, there were an awful lot of women that were oh, working yeah. in there building bombers and, and, and putting engines together and what you name it. So oh, yeah. it's uh, a true it's, pra patriotic uh, thing that a lot of people did. Yes. So. Yeah, I know your uh, your family is very patriotic as as part of that as well yeah. too. Uh, Eric, tell us a little bit about your work history. Uh, I actually started working. I got my first paycheck from the company uh, on my fifth birthday, <laughs> um, and that's a joke because the only reason we could buy our first house was because uh, I had a work history. Uh, we went for our first. My wife and I went to buy our first house. They said, "Well, you know, how long have you worked for your company?" And I was 22 at the time, and I said, well, I got my first paycheck when I was five, and Dad actually had my first paycheck that he had made a, he had saved it when he got, when it returned from the bank. How about that? So I took it, and, uh, but I seriously started working um, full-time. I will always work through uh, summertime, but full-time the Monday after I graduated college, so about 10 years now, so, uh, and... It's all I've ever done. Never filled out a job application and thankfully never been fired. <laughs> so. But you worked for a tough task, taskmaster growing up. I yeah, know everybody, that. everybody always says it must be easy to work for your family, but it has its moments. Yes. So it's definitely a blessing. I wouldn't trade yeah. it for anything. Well, it's, you know, you, it's almost like going through um, when you're working for your family. I, and I've talked to, and, and we've certainly uh, had interviews here with family members that uh, worked in, or that were part of a family operation. And it's almost like an apprenticeship, isn't it? Where it you is. really get to learn at the feet of somebody that knows what they're doing and has really it perfected it. Yeah, and and I say it's a blessing in a way of, I've always grown up around it. So things that um, when we hire new people, uh, like my brother-in-law, my wife's brother, started working for us about two years ago, you quickly see how much you already know compared to somebody not in the business. Mm -hmm. So it is a true apprenticeship because it's, you start from nothing, knowing nothing at a very young age, and you quickly learn it's, it's just in your blood. Yeah. You went to Carolina, and what was your major at Carolina? I got a degree in math. Okay. Of all things. So minored in engineering and in education. Yeah. So I didn't really know what I wanted to do. I wanted to teach for a while, and then... Um, I don't, I've never done anything else, so why would I not work for the family business? There you go. The, uh, the one thing I always remember about your dad is that uh, very few things that he couldn't fix. Oh, yeah. Have you learned that same characteristic or that same Fortunately, trait Fortunately, yes. Him? Yes, I have. Um, the, uh, I, I've truly learned that it is a skill that is hard to teach, but thankfully I got the mechanical gene. Yeah. Um, Things were a little different when Dad learned, yeah. but uh, a little more electronic now. But yes, I can, luckily, and am blessed that I can fix about anything. So as long as you have the right tool. There you go. It's uh, uh, diagrams and schematics are good, but you, it, nothing replaces being able to get in there and understand what what uh, really causes that machine to work and operate. And, it does. and you'd be surprised what knocking it with a hammer will fix sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> so you really can't just oh, tap yeah. it. Oh yeah, sometimes you can knock it with a hammer yeah. and it'll work. Uh, that's funny you say that. My dad always said that that was one of the most important tools in there. I said, why dad, you don't use it to hammer to work on a piece of equipment. He said, oh yeah, you do. Oh yeah. And you just give it that little tap. And uh, Oh yeah, you'd be surprised what a tap with a hammer will fix. What kind of technology have you seen uh, in your family business? How, how has that really changed? You had a 10-year span to talk about it, so you've probably seen a tremendous change. Yeah, and I really I can tell you it's probably been more than 10 years. It's more like um, probably 22, 23 years is what uh, I've seen go from the sheer amount of mechanical parts that it takes in washers and dryers to um, now our wash machines take credit cards. You know, uh, we have um, the equipment we have now is with the electronics, the technology, the efficiency is a lot better. Uh, I mean, say like most home washers, uh, top load washers will use 70 to 100 gallons of water per wash cycle. Now with the new equipment that we use, it can use anywhere between 25 and uh, 50 gallons of water for the, our big machines that we have. 
so the technology has changed efficiency wise and just the sheer amount of components have gotten smaller because you have four or five mechanical parts and now gone to one computer controlled board. Um, we have wireless internet. Um, we can access cameras off site. Like I said, we have um, where some machines will take credit cards. Um, I mean, it's, that's just a small tip of the iceberg. Right. I mean, it's, it's changed drastically in the past probably 10 years has been the biggest improvement in technology usage. Well, the, the one question I've got to ask, I've always wanted to ask somebody, never really had a chance to do it, so I'm going to ask you. There's a top loader and a front end and a front loader. Mm -hmm. What is the real difference in the and why would you want one as opposed to another? Um, you top loaders are just more traditional because they were more they're inexpensive to make. Right. Um, a front load washer uh, has three main benefits. The first one is it uses less water. The second one is it's actually a better wash cycle because tumbling versus swishing, as they call it, mm -hmm. um, is a better way and more efficient way to clean clothes. And um, third is you can actually get a higher spin or water extraction rate when your washer goes into spin when it's a front load washer. So that's the main reason you see a lot of commercial or front loads because you have all of those three benefits. Plus you can get larger capacities. You can fit more clothes and you can go from like your home washer, which is like a whole, what they say, 20 pounds of clothes. Mm -hmm. And now we have washers that'll hold 80 to 90 pound of clothes, which you can't do that with a top load washer. Yeah. So the drum would just be too big. <laughs> now I'm not really great with, uh, with, the, uh, with washing, but I do know one thing, that uh, when you it, try to wash a comforter in your home, washing machine, you know, just a standard uh, residential washer, you've got a problem. Yep. So I bet you have a lot of people that come in there to the, uh, to your facility. We do. We do. And that's, uh, that's one thing that I try and do, um, is we call them non-traditional laundromat customers. Right. And that's the audience that I really try and grasp. And a non-traditional, uh, laundromat customer would be somebody who has a washer and dryer at home or in their apartment facility. But, uh, we try and show, hey, you don't want to wash your comforter in your home washer or you won't have a choice but to come to the laundromat because your <laughs> wash machine will be um, broken. And that's a big thing what people don't realize is there are a lot of jobs that a home washer cannot just do that our machines can. And also, if when you come back from vacation and stuff like that and you have a bunch of clothes, you can wash four or five loads in an hour, hour and 15 minutes versus washing all day at home. Well, that's, that's for sure. Yeah. Coming back from vacation, you seem like you yeah, clothes multiply. Oh yeah. Uh, exponentially oh, somehow. Yeah. The more days you've been gone, the more you- Oh yeah. If you, you don't know, wash for a week, there's a lot of like, clothes that need, yeah. clothes that need to be washed. Yeah, there are. What is the uh, biggest challenge that you have uh, in business today? Uh, when trying to keep all the equipment running and things like that. How do, do you have, are there sensors in there that let you know that there's a problem or is it just a, you set up routine checks to make sure that things are working? There's both. Um, with the new washers and dryers, they give fault codes that um, we know of. They'll display them on the display. Um, now they actually have where you can hook all the machines up to the internet and you'll get text messages or emails or you can log into your laundromat and it'll let you know um, if there's fault codes. M maintenance, the biggest thing used to be maintenance, but now with technology, the maintenance has gotten a lot less. Mm -hmm. um, I think the, the biggest issue that we run into is just trying to keep our customers happy, trying to keep a clean laundromat, a uh, safe laundromat, trying to just stay on top of technology to improve your overall washing experience. So thankfully it's not, we, thankfully it's not maintenance anymore. We do have a regular maintenance schedule, which cuts out a lot of the problems that could happen. But I think just trying to keep our customer happy is our uh, main goal and our, our biggest problem. Well, I think you just answered a big question there that uh, if, if you can 
have that connectivity with those equipment through the uh, internet that you can probably have your cell phone with you and oh, check you on things. So you, I, I can do everything on my, I could do everything on my phone from changing prices, not being there to starting a machine. If, uh, happen to be there and somebody's having problems and I know it, I can actually start the machine remotely from my phone. Uh, I can see how many cycles it's done that day, that week, that month. I mean, it's just technology's made it a lot easier in a way just to stay on top of the whole laundromat business. So managing an operation like that is really coming down to a science now. The technology really comes into play to make you more efficient, more effective, to to keep your business running like it, like you want it to run. Yeah, and I think it's key to staying relevant. I mean, competition is real, and it's one big thing. I mean, it's to keep competition out, you keep your customer happy, and mm -hmm. technology really helps keep our customers happy. I know one thing that uh, I really thought was neat when uh, I went with my wife to take a comforter so that uh, she's smart enough to, to let me know that we needed to do that. And I <laughs> went in, and I saw you had a dog uh, do you have a, a place where you can bring your dog in and, yeah. and wash? What do you call that? It's called. It's actually called the dog wash. Okay. It's, um, the equipment we, the company we bought the equipment for. I mean, the name is the dog wash, yeah. and the sign said dog wash. So we said, just keep it the dog wash. There you go. That uh, with a community like Aiken, I tell you, it is a. I've got three labs, so oh, it's yeah. it's a uh, it's a job. It is. Um, I remember first time seeing it and dad said he wanted to go look at it and I thought to myself he's got to be crazy. <laughs> uh, went and looked at it and you know if if you haven't done it it's something to do. I've seen people wash everything from a chihuahua to I've seen an 85 year old woman wash a Great Dane. Wow. And um, you know they're, they're, they're really neat because the the dogs like it because the water comes out at about 85 degrees, so it's not hot, it's not cold. Um, really, the only thing you have to bring is a towel. There's flea and tick shampoo, yeah. tearless shampoo, conditioner, uh, de skunk for if they stink. Um, and I mean, I've had a couple friends who say, oh, I love the de skunk because it's yeah. the only way my wife lets a dog in the house. <laughs> well, for those of, uh, of our community that have uh, dogs that, and with deer season and, and oh, yeah. uh, birds, uh, I think it just opened up for. What, dove or quail? Dove, yeah, yeah. dove season. When uh, you get a lot of labs when yes. duck season starts. So, um, and we have actually three of those locations. We have three dog washes in Aiken. So, um, and they're all, they're all the same. And they're, I mean, I wash, I, wanted, I wash all of our dogs there. Yeah. So they're not as big as labs, but they still get clean. There you go. <laughs> yes. Dog's a dog. Yeah, yeah. And they, they need to get, they need to get clean. Oh, yes, they do. Well, those are those are things that are people in Aiken really uh, love their pets. They do their horses and their dogs. They do, and, and you're allowed to wash. Uh, we allow horse blankets to be washed at our ah. um, laundromats. I know there's a lot of communities that don't allow it, but we, all of our um, washers are medical grade stainless steel, so they're antimicrobial. Right. Um, they wash where the, there's no hair that stays. So we have a lot of people wash dog beds and uh, horse blankets. Um, in our laundromat. That was very intuitive because that was what I was going to ask you <laughs> next is the, 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 uh, the cleanliness of, of, a, of a public uh, uh, open laundromat like that. So you, the, what is an antimicrobial? What does that mean? Um, the antimicrobial just means that the stainless steel is high enough quality that uh, bacteria and germs uh, will not grow on it. Mm -hmm. Um, but cleanliness is a big thing for us. I mean, it's probably our main goal besides washer and dryer working correctly is cleanliness. Um, all of our laundromats get checked at least twice a day and cleaned once a day. And um, I mean, you don't want to go try and clean clothes in a dirty facility. No. So that's kind of counteractive. Well, I, every time I've been in, it was uh, it was very, very neat. No, oh, thank you. It was it was a it was nice to go in, and it was nice and close too. That made oh, a good. difference too. Good. Speaking of close, how many different cities do you have? Uh, uh, we operate from here in Aiken to New Allenton, Williston, North Augusta, 
Johnston, Edgefield, Ridge Spring, and Saluda. So is our of every town that we operate laundromats yeah, so in. So you need that connectivity with your Wi-Fi yeah, and your cell phone it comes, and everything. Yeah, uh, checking cameras or checking machines in Saluda is a, from your phone is a lot easier than driving. Absolutely, because you can't get there from here. No, not quickly. No. <laughs> you know, you've been, uh, you've been very active as, as uh, one of our young professionals. And uh, earlier this year, you were named uh, as one of the young professionals to follow. And there was a a very nice article that uh, that was in the Aiken Standard uh, for all of you that were, were named to this uh, prestigious group of young people and I know that you've been very involved with uh, with the uh, Chamber of Commerce and the Aiken Young Professionals and you were chair and what was it 2015 you were the chair? I did it for half of 14 and all of 2015. Yeah, so tell us a little bit about what that's like as, as a, as a, a a business uh, operator and uh, somebody who is, uh, you know, entrenched in the community like you are, uh, has that helped you? Yeah, it, it, I really, when I joined Aiken Young Professionals was not so much for the business sense, but to uh, just meet people. But it really surprised me the number of people that I met who had, who were customers of ours or had never heard of us and didn't know that they could take comforters or take mm -hmm. dog beds or had could take a week's worth of clothes. So, I mean, just for the sheer aspect of finding customers and listening to their input to gaining new customers is well worth it in itself. Well, running the, uh, the program as the chairman, that, that's, uh, that, that's a lot of work. It was, but it was a great learning experience and I'm very glad that I did it. Yeah. That organization has uh, really fostered a lot of good things with uh, with our young uh, millennials in town and, and trying to help them plug in do you has that have you seen that program growing yeah I remember the first time I went I mean just by the sheer number of involved members uh, I remember going to our third Thursdays which is our big event mm -hmm. that um, we have every month and I remember there would be 20 25 uh, uh, people there and I've just seen it, I think one, like this January we had over 100 people. And this year has really uh, taken off where we've kept 75 people at every event that we've had, which is a huge deal, mm -hmm. um, especially for um, Aiken and the sheer amount of young people who move here, millennials that move here and move away. You know, if you, we found out that if you I mean, I hate to say it, but if they move here, find friends, find a partner of some type, you know, get engaged, get married. I mean, it's a fact of life is they stay here. And right. that's one of our main goals, Aiken Young Professionals, is, you know, not only show them Aiken is a great place to live, but if you can get them personally connected through a relationship, be it, you know, romantically or friendship, it's, they stay. And that's, like I said, that's one of our main yeah. goals. Well, there's, they're multi uh, facets of networking and there is yeah. uh, and what one people don't realize is one big thing is not only do we try and network through Aiken Young Professionals business wise but also personal relationship wise because like I said I mean that's with our age group that's one way to really keep people here is setting up personal relationships do you see a lot of the uh, uh, people doing uh, staying in Aiken once once they get connected like that yeah, and unfortunately we do lose a lot of good members because um, just this, I guess, age that we're at with work. I mean, a lot of people are offered jobs that they can't turn down and right. they have to move. But yeah, I mean, there's a lot of people who have stayed in Aiken just because of the relationships, mm -hmm. business and personal that they've made through Aiken Young Professionals. And I think that's important um, to... Uh, to our audience to know that uh, there is a good network of young people. So if, if uh, people uh, are aware of young business people that either work for them or that they know uh, through family connections that uh, the Aiken Young Professionals would be a great organization for them to plug into to get to know more of, of the people that are in their age group. And uh, what is the age group for the young professionals? It goes from 22, ages 22 to 39. 
And an interesting thing uh, to go off what you said is I was born, raised here in around Aiken and have a lot of friends that I grew up with. But most of the people that I see and hang out with now and spend most of my time, my wife and I is, are people that we met through the Aiken Young Professionals. So well, that's I mean, an interesting twist. It is, and it's amazing the amount of relationships, both business and mainly personal, that are made through Aiken Young Professionals. Um, I mean, it's a very interesting twist that most of my time are spent with people that I met at Aiken Young Professionals. Yeah. And an, and another side of that too, I found personally from, you know, the, the just the networking in the community through the chamber or in, in other organizations is that uh, when you're dealing with people that you, you go to meetings with, that you socialize with, that when, when it comes to, uh, f to the business aspect of it, there's a, there's a, a built-in trust factor that there already is. exists. So you're able to do things quicker, faster, and with more confidence too. Yeah, I mean, uh, for instance, for me, I mean, there's questions that I would have and, uh, about a particular business or something, and, I've, I met somebody through Young Professionals and I would know, you might not know the answer that I'm looking for, but you definitely know somebody who in that company can answer my question. And you hit right on the next target that I was going to shoot for, and that was the, the resources that are there. You're going to find people that they may not know, but they have a friend or, or a professional that they are aware of that uh, can help you. So it's a it's just a multifaceted operation when you have a, a group of uh, folks that have a common interest in uh, other than age, but they right. just want to get together to make life better for their families and for their friends and and the community and the community. So I mean, we're very, very strong, and I mean, a lot of people say that there's a big thing with millennials are very selfish and um, you know they're not very they don't look or care towards other, and they've actually done recent research that show that that's, that's very untrue. Yep. Um, we very much care about this community and this city and all, with all aspects of it. I mean, from healthcare to education, I mean, we care because we want it to be intact for us yeah. in the future. What do you, as a young person, as, a, as a, an entrepreneur, what is your vision for Aiken? My vision for Aiken, I mean, to me Aiken has I mean, there is no ceiling to where it can go. Um, Aiken's already a wonderful town, uh, wonderful community. Um, but my vision for Aiken is just to still keep the same homey feel it has, and but just grow towards um, small business growth and growth towards pulling in younger families. I think the longevity of this community really stems on the amount of young families that we can pull in. Um, just, you know, not only for business-wise, but just community-wise. Mm -hmm. I mean, I really think that's something that um, is being done and continues needs to be done is to kind of draw those young families. Because young families spend money, they buy houses, they shop, they come downtown, they eat out, and uh, I just think it's a big part of um, what Aiken is trying to do and um, hopefully will keep doing, which I mean I know they will, is just drawing in young families because it's proven fact is that's where the future lies in communities is movement, the movement of young families into your city. And it's, it's such a vital thing to, to always have a replenishing of the talent that, that you need to keep a community vibrant and moving forward. But young folks like yourself that uh, that take time to invest back in the community through service and through just being a positive uh, influence on, on your generation. Talking about generations, um, I, you and I, before we started taping, we're talking about uh, downtown Aiken and the uh, Yellow House downtown. Yep, Park tell, Avenue. Yeah, tell us, tell people a little bit about that, where it's located and what it is. Um, it's located on Park Avenue across from, say, George Funeral Home. Uh -huh. And uh, it was actually built in 1868. And it started off as a four bedroom house. And it was my grand, my fraternal's, it was my dad's grandfather's mother's house. And um, 
actually all the land, land around it, there's a funny picture, but we raised cattle right downtown here yep. um, before the railroad came. And uh, when the railroad came is kind of when we sold off. And um, my dad's great uncle started a pharmacy on one side where Harper Realty is. Uh -huh. And where Park Avenue Paints used to be was actually his other great uncle's um, auto mechanic. He fixed cars. So, uh, I mean, it's joked that we were here before Aiken, but... You know, but it was still aching. So we're we're sitting in the municipal building. Yep. Cattle were roaming and feeding. Yes, there's actually a funny picture of Ida Eubanks, which would be my grandfather's grandmother, uh -huh. um, standing here, or, or standing in front of the yellow house, and there's she, her husband, and two cows, and it's all open fields all around. Yeah, and as, as we were talking earlier, our uh, fond memories of, of being very small, very young, walking uh, along Park Avenue and and having Mr. Eubanks sitting uh, sitting on the uh, porch up there rocking yep. and speaking to people as they went by, he he got a great deal of pleasure out of doing that. He did, and most people uh, he either taught most people. Yes. Uh, John Eubanks he either yeah. taught him at Aiken High or I think what he's most he's more famous for probably is he ran the canteen. Yes, he at did. At Aiken High for he years and years. He certainly so, did. Um, and he was a uh, he knew so much about um, Aiken and he could tell stories and he used to sit on that porch and he lived to be 93 and he would drink two glass or two Cokes out of glass bottles every day, smoke a cigar and he had a chili cheeseburger every day from City Billiards um, until he went to a nursing home. Every day wow. for lunch, that's what he'd eat. Well, he was a, a wonderful man because every time I'd go by, he'd call me by name <laughs> and he would ask about my mother, who he taught, oh, yeah. and my father. And uh, it, it was just, he had a great recall of people and was just always such a jolly, uh, he was. just, all, I, I don't think I ever saw him when he didn't smile or wasn't, wasn't very he was always gregarious, happy. outgoing like that. So oh, yeah. uh, great, great stories about uh, growing up in Aiken. Oh, yeah. and just, just one of those little things. So the next time, uh, people walk by there, and now they'll have a whole different uh, oh, yeah. concept of what what took place in this this oh, uh, yeah. block. Yeah, it's so. a very uh, the the house is interesting, and it's great to be. I'm glad it's part of my family. Yeah, well, I am too. Thank you. It was a it was a good part of it, and uh, going to school with uh, your your uh, your uncle and your and your dad were. That was interesting too. I'm sure so. it was. I'm sure it was. I've heard stories about both of them. Yes, I, we won't go into <laughs> yeah, that. Yeah, do that. No, I don't want to open that up because <laughs> they, be they, they would they, they could go tit for tat. Oh with yeah, that. So oh, there yeah. would be no question about that. Oh, yeah. But we just uh, have really enjoyed having you on on the program today. Well, thank you for having me. And it's it's uh, again it, it's one of the opportunities that we have to show our community and, and our business folks that uh, we do have young people like yourself coming up in Aiken that care about the same things that they care about. Yeah. And I think you certainly made that very clear. And we appreciate not only you being with us today, but we appreciate all that your family thank has you. meant to and done for our community. Thank and whole. you. Eric, thank you so much for thank being you with very us. Much. And give our best to your dad and I your will. uncle. I will. Thank you so much. Thank you. And thank you for joining us again this week on Aiken Business Matters. Thank you.